And here we are for day 13 of the Service to Purpose, the Mission is You Challenge. My name is Brooks Holland, and I'm here with Mr. Llama. Maybe it's Mrs. Llama. But anyway, we're going to save the drama for your llama. And really, that's what I want to get into today. Again, my name is Brooks Holland, and my gift is helping you see your greatness when you're doing all the self-sabotage and everything possible to avoid seeing it yourself. And that's kind of what we're going to go in and talk about today. And it was a nice, sunny Southern California day. So just cooling off here in the pool and figured this would be a great time to do the video. So anyway, I'm getting, you know, lots of great feedback, questions from people. You know, they've been stuck for a while, you know, this, that, and the other. And the question that keeps coming up is why? And, and here's the thing. The mindset, the belief set that got us into a situation, that got us into a problem, is not the same mindset or belief set that's going to get us out of a problem. Let that sink in. So these situations that we've been getting ourselves into in the repeating of the problems, we can't think our way out of them because our best thinking, our current belief set got us into that situation. And this is something I did for the longest time because, I mean, I'm not a rocket scientist, but I'm, you know, relatively intelligent, you know, was like all honors AP and uh, high school. I went to the Naval Academy, you know, that sort of stuff. So it's not like I'm not smart. Um, but I kept trying to think my way out of stuff, kept trying to research, kept trying to do the knowing, the knowing, the knowing, the knowing, the knowing, like that's going to fix the problem. And the thing is the way the brain works, like, yeah, when you know something, it goes out there to find evidence to make sure that the thing that you know, so you get to be right about it. And so that's why it's so hard to think your way through and out of these types of situations. And that's why the first step is the awareness so that you can interrupt. And that's really one of the key parts of what this challenge is, is getting that awareness. So like, oh crap, I'm doing it again. Because if you don't realize you're doing it, you, you'll never stop it. You'll just keep repeating the pattern. So the first step is the awareness. And then the second thing is, is we got to go deep and we got to get to the root of that belief set. Because a lot of people use the term mindset, which I think is part of it, but I really like to go deeper because it's the belief set that is so stinking key. Like you can do a lot of, you know, chanting, you can get that false motivation. I mean, let's be honest, that's what people have been doing for the longest time in the, you know, the nutrition slash health slash diet space. I mean, that's why there's a gajillion diets and people will just diet hop, diet hop, diet hop because they'll get really motivated, do something for only five days or seven days or 10 days or whatever it is. And then eventually they just go right back and they're just repeating the patterns. They get this fake motivation, you know, push through for a little bit, but they haven't really gotten to the root, to the crux of why they're repeating that pattern. And so one of the biggest things that I say, especially, you know, because my wife's business, you know, 3 million social media followers, you know, helped build that over a bunch of years. And that business is 95, 96% women. But one of the things that I would say to people, because they've, you know, they've been on the programs, they've been doing all these things, and this applies to everything. I'm just using this as an example. I would say it's not what you're eating. It's what's eating you. Because, you know, people would have the plans laid out in front of them and somehow like they would eat a pizza, they'd eat chips and guacamole, they'd eat Twinkies, they'd eat Snickers, like whatever it is, you know, and it's like they knew what to do. I mean, let's be honest, most of us, you know, capable adults, we logically know that, hey, we should probably, you know, that a salad is healthier than a pizza. Like we don't need to buy a program or anything to know those types of things. But it comes down to is like, why is it that when we know that we don't take those actions? And that's where we got to get because it's not what you're eating. It's what's eating you. It's what's eating you on the inside. It's what's eating you that's that's causing us to sit in these loops it's the, the, the deeper part is, you know, the not worthy, the not good enough. I mean, everything roots back to those things. So you say, you know, my belief is like, you know, I can't lose weight. Well, why? Once you keep going back, it's because, you know, you're not worthy. You're not good enough. You're not lovable. Those are kind of the three core things that everything will root back down to. And so 
that's why it's so key to first get the awareness, do the deep work, but then the other key is you got to have somebody there to help you for that reason, you know, because we all have stuff in our blind spots. And the thing is, is that's what our ego does. Our ego is designed to keep us safe. The ironic thing is, is it keeps us safe from everything that we say that we logically want. So let's just use, let's just use divorce as an example. You know, kids' parents gets divorced. You know, they make up a story that, you know, I'm not lovable. You know, we all know that when two parents gets divorced, 99,000 out of 100,000 times has nothing to do with the kid. Just the adults didn't work out. But once that child makes that story, that belief that says, hey, you know, I'm not lovable, fast forward 15, 20, 30, 40, 50 years, if that's the belief set that's running, they will logically sit down and, you know, talk, have drinks with all their friends and, you know, at lunch say, God, you know, I just, I just want this loving relationship. But the thing is they have that belief set that they're not lovable. So the ego is going to keep them safe because when they were a kid and they, you know, they had love, they got hurt. So the ego is like, you know, this sucks. I'm going to keep you safe from this whole, this whole love thing. And so what happens is, is they'll keep repeating the pattern and they will, you know, they'll logically say, I want love, but they keep repeating the pattern to keep it away because when, when there's love, there's the possibility of getting hurt. And you can apply this same thing, whether it's finances, you know, whether it's scarcity mindset, you know, there's so many ways, but the, the thing that we so desperately want, that's where we got hurt as a kid. That's where we got wounded. That's where we got that belief set. And that's what the ego is designed to do. It wants to keep us safe. It's just ironically, it wants to keep us safe from every single thing that we logically say that we want. You know, we're tired of being broke, yet we keep staying in that loop and that pattern. And that's why a lot of times it takes, you know, accountability. It takes a coach. It takes somebody else out there once you have the awareness so that somebody else can pull you out of there. Because we all have stuff in our blind spots that, you know, that we can't see. And that's a big thing I'm doing this challenge. I really want to get the awareness. I want to get people, I want to get you going down there, doing the deep work, being aware of this so that you can get help, so that you can get free and get to the other side of things. And that's why I said, you know, save the drama for the llama. Don't be dragging that. Don't be, don't be repeating those patterns in life. I mean... It's so painful because I know I've done some of these same things for, you know, over 25 years and it's like, you know, keep getting knowledge, 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 but you just keep, just keep creating, you know, the wrong thing. And there's actually a term for that. It's called the reticular activation system. You know, it's like you go out and drive you know, a red car, all of a sudden you start seeing that same model of red car everywhere. Like the brain goes out there and, you know, to look for stuff. So that's what, you know, that's what we see, you know, in politics or whatever it is. People have a belief around something and their mind as it scans the news, as it scans everything out there, it basically filters, you know, this, this fits, this aligns with my belief set. But this, this goes to everything. This goes to our love, our relationships, our financial, everything like that. Like if you have a belief set that, you know, I'm always going to be poor, you know, your brain's going to go out there and look for all the reasons that you get to be poor and anything that tells you otherwise, your brain's going to reject in an effort to keep you safe. And so I just really wanted to do this video at this time just because I've been getting questions. You know, there's a process here. There's really three pillars and we're going through them right now. And the first one is we got to clean up. So we got to clean up, then we're going to get some clarity, and then we're going to get some consistency and action. And so, and the thing is, once you do this one time for the big stuff, it's not like you're done. The rest of your life, with that level of awareness, you're going to always be cleaning up stuff. It's just the messes are going to be a whole lot smaller. And then, you just, you'll just keep doing it. So maybe like right now you got something huge from your childhood, you clean that up. And then as you get better and better at this, you know, that annoying person in the line at target that's triggering you. I mean, it's a much smaller thing, but you'll be able to clean that up super quick. So you can get about, you know, get back on, you know, the clarity, get back focused on your direction, your vision, you know, so that you can live life so that you can live into your purpose and stop serving a BS identity that's been holding you back your whole life.
So there you have it. That's day 13. My name is Brooks Holland. Please leave a comment if you find value in this. Share it with somebody. Share it with somebody that can needs it. That's a huge step into leadership. You don't have to have all the solutions, but just you know, passing information along to somebody else, getting them the help they need so that they can you know get a new sense of awareness. That's what it's all about. So thanks a lot. We'll be back tomorrow for day 14. Service to purpose. The mission is you.